Hello, sweet friends. Welcome back here to The Productive Homemaker. Over here in my little corner of YouTube, I like to talk about frugal and intentional living. We've got to start this video off with a huge celebration and thank you to all of you lovely people here. Over the last week, our community has doubled in size and surpassed the 10,000 subscriber mark. To say that I am humbled is an understatement. In fact, you've left me speechless. And I am just so grateful for each and every one of you who has decided to be here with me. So as we're making supper tonight, I'd like to just tell you a little bit about myself if you're new around here, just so that way you know who you're listening to. So to start off, my name is Laramie, and I've been married to my best friend for nine years as of this month. We have four beautiful and amazing children, and I stay home with them full time, meaning we live solely off of my husband's provisions. We have a little philosophy and believe that money should be working for us and not us working for money. So we've shaped our lives to live a debt-free, including the mortgage life. It's very simple and sometimes a bit difficult, but it's a life that we love and we cherish immensely. As a very creative person, I found a lot of joy in learning how to cook over the last decade. It's allowed me to learn how to express myself and also to get very smart with the ingredients that I purchase. We live on a tight budget, but that doesn't mean that our food can't taste good and be delicious. With this sudden influx of new friends from all over the world commenting on my videos here with their own frugal foods, it really gave me a hankering for some ethnic meals. So this evening, I made a huge supper of Lebanese chicken, turmeric rice, naan bread, and some split pea soup. So all of my foreign friends, you can laugh at me and my feeble attempts here. I still need to practice a lot of this. The end results though, were delicious nonetheless. I like to add a smoked ham hock into our slip pea soup and let it simmer. It really adds a nice and deep flavor into it. It's such a simple soup to make too. Caramelized onions, a very healthy serving of garlic, salt, and some pepper. And you really can't go wrong with it. It's a favorite for all of my little children. Put the lid on and we'll let it simmer away while we cook the rest of supper. Now, all of this food was not just for this one evening. Whenever I'm cooking, I try to make enough for multiple lunches to feed people throughout the week. So we'll be eating on all of this food over the course of the next few days. It's great because I can take the leftover chicken and shred it into sandwich meat, which will be paired with the leftover turmeric rice and naan. We can top it off with some fresh sliced onions and some homemade tzatziki sauce. And then the split pea soup will be reheated and eaten with fresh bread. Just because we're using leftovers doesn't mean that we have to eat it in its original form. I tend to mess with it and turn it into different dishes that my family loves. Cooking is such a beautiful thing. We all have to do it, whether we live on the Southern Hemisphere or the Northern Hemisphere. Everybody has to eat every single day. 
and we all come from different walks of life, different countries with different meals, different social statuses and different families with their own traditions on how to cook. It's really amazing to think about that. It's amazing to think about that there are other people my age that are living life just like I am right now, and yet our experiences are just so vastly different. And I don't think it's possible for us to even truly appreciate that. At least, I don't think that I can truly appreciate the magnitude of that thought. Sometimes I think about, would I even want the option to experience all of the different walks of life all at once? And honestly, if it were an option given to me, I think I would have to decline it. Because my own life holds enough ups and downs as it is that I don't need to add others' perspectives or experiences into it. My life is my own. And I love it for what it is in its raw form. Dabbling in social media as I do, I've noticed a dark theme that tends to rear its head when people share about their lives. Here in rural America, where I am, it's something that our grandparents would call um, a pissing contest. It's the act of trying to compete and to find superiority over another person to see whose experience means more. One in particular that I've personally received is that as a citizen in the United States, I don't know what it's like to live in true poverty. And to be honest, those criticisms are correct. There's never been a moment in my life where I've watched my child starve or been forced to work and trade to keep my life. My home has never been destroyed by war. And for the most part, we live in a safe place that my children and I can be out on our own without fear. And for all of these things, I am just so grateful for, and I recognize that not everybody has those same gifts that I do. I'm grateful for all the opportunities, and I'm grateful for the good things in my life. But that does not mean that, as an American, that we don't face trials. They're just different from other places around the world. And for a family that is statistically considered rich around the world, but low income in their own country, it is still a hard life from what is around us. If you ever encounter a situation like that, where someone confides and shares with you their own trials, instead of detracting from their sufferings, it's actually such a beautiful opportunity to practice empathy and gratitude. We all have seasons in life that contain pain, suffering, and grief. But just as each of our fingerprints are different, so are the experiences that bring those emotions. It's easy to poke at someone when they're down, but it's a skill to be able to hear someone's story without diminishing or detracting from their experiences. And even more so, it is a skill to pull the rays of sunshine out of a dark place to find gratitude within it. And this is something that takes practice and can be applied not only in conversations with others, but in conversations with ourselves. The hard moments in life still have hope interlaced if we look for them. We can always find gratefulness that things aren't worse and that we've been blessed with another day to move forward. So as fellow humans and fellow friends, may we learn to have empathy for those that we spend time with and may we always be looking for the hope that lines every storm cloud.
This naan bread is so delicious. I didn't get to catch making the dough on film as I had a very sweet little helper helping me and we choose not to share them. So instead, I savored that moment with her as she helped me mix up all the different ingredients. This is a double batch, so that way we can enjoy it for several days, though I know it won't last very long seeing as all the children love to eat it. If you'd like to try your hand at making some yummy fluffy clouds of naan, I'll leave the ingredients and directions in the description of this video for you. It's a very beginner friendly bread recipe that just about anybody is able to make. A great trick with learning to make naan is that while you're cooking, if you pre-separate all of the little balls of dough and let them sit, it lets the gluten complexity really strengthen. So you end up with a very stretchy paper thin dough that becomes very soft and easily pliable as you cook it. The Lebanese chicken just came out of the oven and the aroma was so delightful in this. I sat them on that bed of lemon and you could just smell the cinnamon, the coriander with the lemon. And oh, it was so, so wonderful. It was definitely a longer evening in the kitchen for me today, but as I plated up all of that food, I just reminded myself how wonderful it is that we get to eat a warm supper all together around the table. And not only did I feed our family for just this evening, but I also get to feed them with this over the next few days. Thank you so much for being here with me today as I made supper. I hope you enjoyed it and it's given you some inspiration to try out some different meals. Thank you again for being here and for subscribing. I can't wait for us to talk again and I hope that you have a lovely rest of your day. Farewell friends.